and welcome back. This is the part of lecture entitled Thread Level Parallelism Part 2, and the meta goal here is to understand from the software point of view, how can we, how can we make it easier for the programmer to deal with all these threads? How do we do this? We've got a machine that's multi-core, many logical CPUs available. How do I write software to be able to make use of all of that if I have a really big problem that needs that? Certainly I could run, if I had, let's say, eight logical CPUs, I could run eight different programs, and then I feel good about that. Eight different, oh, I got a QuickTime, and I got a web browser, and I got a, that's fine. Terminal running an A.out, out, but what if I have one program that wants to use all of them? What can I do? So part of that, part of this goal of this series of lectures is to understand what software support we have for being able to do that. So let's let's st step back. We've got a choice of programming languages. So let's talk about parallel programming languages and what's out there in this in the space. These are the languages supporting parallel programming. It's a lot. It's a ton. Um, and uh, I will point out that the one language that folks are telling me is just maybe the one to do it right. A lot of people have different, different attempts at this. Go. Go is a really nice language. I haven't programmed a, fa I did a, little, a little baby toy program, but I haven't programmed a lot in that. But I've heard that Go, people who are in this space think that Go might be the future to be able to do it in a really clean way. So play with Go and explore that if you want to explore this more. But there's a lot of things here for different reasons. Uh, CUDA is how you drive your GPU. Lots of different things are here. Um, we're going to say to this with, current, with currently with, with C. So how do, which one to pick? Let's talk about this. Well, why do we have so many? Let's step back. Why do we have so many? Well, first of all, why do we have intrinsics? The reason, the reason we have intrinsics is because um, the compilers don't support it. We, uh, intrinsics are a way of dropping code directly in the assembly level because it doesn't know how to generate that automatically. So that's a little bit annoying. And so we're trying to, try to encourage Intel and other folks to fix your compilers uh, so that it'll do it automatically for us. Um, SIMD features are continually being added to compilers, which is really nice. We appreciate that. It is certainly an area of research. People who are in there, and Professor Kathy Yellick uh, in our department is kind of at the intersection of both of these pieces. She's a programming language person who cares about parallelism. She's exactly at the space, the intersection of how do you get programming languages to wake up and realize we got to make it easier for people to write parallel programs. Um, so, there's been a, you know, 20 plus years of thinking about how to take old school C and auto parallelize it to become really fast assembly. Um, so first of all, sorry, 20 plus years of taking C and making fast assembly without parallelization. So there's that. How long will it take them to figure out how to take C and auto parallelize it? If I can automatically generate assembly and really be clever about optimizations. Boy, you should see all the optimizations that the new assemblers have. I mean, the new compilers have, which eventually becomes the assemblers, but the compilers do to become assembly language. That, that first compile level is remarkable. Um, so it's really compiler technology. How can we do the same thing for parallelization? I've got a boring C code, and I can really write pretty good assembly That's if it's not parallel. But if it is a parallel, it's a still harder problem. Um, it's a, it's, we think of it as an open problem still. Um, we have you know, great cases in very simple things. There is, there is an automatically handled loops in an interesting way um, that's coming up, but it's, it, it it's requires a lot of work. Here's your opportunity to become famous. If you decide, if you have some breakthrough, talk to Professor Yellick and rel re related people in our department if you're interested in that space. So the number of choices is an indication that there is no universal solution. There isn't just an easy answer that somebody owned. Somebody just owns that space, and you know, there's there's a couple, you know, there 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 there, there isn't really a, a clear sense. So everyone says, well, it's not solved yet. I'll make my own, and now I'll make my own too, and I'm, me too, me too, me three. And so you have all these people clamoring because nobody's really one. Um, and the needs are very specific. You have people operating at very large scale levels with massive data. You be working at a very small micro level with a multiple core space. You know, I, I, huge data, a million machines, computers, all parts of the world in the distributed computing space. And I have also, I want to be able to work on just a very small problem, but I want to be able to have, um, you know, eight cores all be very fast on one computer. So that's a different set. That's a different scale. And so these languages are kind of optimized for different things. Um, for example, scientific computing, matrix multiply, uh, machine learning, we've got that. Uh, we've got a web server handling multiple requests. That's usually distributed computing space. I.O. is happening simultaneously. Anybody, any web server, anybody running a web server knows that. Uh, how do you make that work? Um, languages are special, specialized for different tasks. We've seen that before. Um, here's a problem not as particularly easy to use of all of these. Um, and what we're going to teach you in 621C is parallel language examples for high-performance computing. We're going to teach you OpenMP in the next couple of lectures, and after that, we're going to teach you MapReduce. So two things that are really powerful and high-level, and Spark and all of those things, we'll teach you that idea as well. So 
That's what we're going to do in 61C, and we'll, next lecture we'll teach you OpenNP. We'll see you there.